Beirut is the most beautiful capital in the world. Beirut is a nightmare. <laughs> I would say Beirut is home. مرحبا اليوم رجعنا على بيروت ومش حيلا بيروت على الشوارع القديمه محل ما في كاك في فول في ساندويشات اي ام انتوني رحيل اي ام ا دنتال سيرجن باي بروفيشن اي ام فروم لبنان بيروت ستارتد ا فود بلوك كولد نو غارليك نو اونينز اول وي دو از سبريد هابينس Uh, using uh, food. Uh, my name is Annie Kukjan. Uh, I'm a painter. I study theology, but essentially I'm a painter. Hi, my name is Shailin Karam. I work at Marfa. Uh, this is where we are. It's a young art gallery. <laughs> I've always lived in Beirut. Uh, I grew up here. Most of us have a very uh, difficult relationship with Beirut. I think it's a it's a love hate relationship. I lived very hard things in Beirut and very beautiful things. So it's a it's a place that has has big value for me. It's where many uh, cultures live together. It's where food has a different taste. It's a city that has lived 30 years of war and now revived. and uh, rebuilt again beirut has lots of meaning it means really a lot to me and uh, to many people uh, to everyone that lives here we're always nagging about many things but at the same time it's a city that's uh, very touching that's very lively that's very dynamic and that you can't but love this i think is the best view you could have in beirut you can see the port right there tourists like the uh, places like the sea and the uh, nightlife but uh, that doesn't doesn't interest me personally because i have another story with beirut something who comes from elsewhere can be interested in these things for 15 days for example it is an interesting place for a vacation First of all, I would say to anyone visiting Beirut, start by the local perspective. And the local perspective is where food is different, unusual and unconventional people and the discoveries. Ask a local and then move on to uh, the known part, move on to the touristic part. Definitely downtown Beirut that looks very closely maybe to uh, any uh, international city. You know, very often you hear people say, ah, there isn't much happening in Beirut, it's a boring city, all you do is go out, eat, drink, but that's really, really not true. There are a lot of things like music festival, uh, cinema festivals, a lot of art events as well. Lebanese cuisine, in one word, is sexy. It's a sexy cuisine, lots of colors, lots of flavors, freshness, lots of things we learned from the neighbors. But what Lebanese managed to do is uh, put some more uh, uh, flavor, more, more freshness, more taste in these plates, making them even uh, better from their origin. The middle table is uh, that Lebanese feast. It um, consists of more than 75 different plates, and this is very typical. But we do not eat this at home. This is something we only eat at restaurants usually. Usually around the country, we've known for a very good, juicy uh, shawarma sandwich. Uh, and in the Avengers movie, they talked about the Lebanese shawarma.
we have amazing food, man. <laughs> Delicious. Yeah, uh, surely if some uh, some uh, someone from Europe comes, it's uh, it's delightful. We've started the street food market called Soul Akel two years ago, and from that day, it changed in a way where we have accepted to take the extra mile. What changed the the food not only in Lebanon but worldwide is definitely Instagram. Food is an artistic item that that looks good in a picture. So you have to take a picture of it before eating it. And I think Lebanon and the world has uh, followed that trend. very present around us and yet we have no clue what it was like. There are bombs all the time and uh, it was very hard. It was a war of religions, uh, it was a war of different things. They never agreed on a common history uh, of the war. So you don't really like, you don't learn it at school. It's just what you hear, what you know from your parents, what you read about, uh, but it's always very biased. An entire generation who suffered extremely, and the next generation maybe will be more healthy, but our generation was uh, deeply affected. The political scene is quite depressive here. We need change, actually. We need change, definitely. We have a president for, for many years. <laughs> That's the, the most basic thing we didn't have. But n now we have, maybe this is the, the unique achievement in many years. They take their orders from elsewhere because they don't care about what, about Lebanon. Each one has his uh, his money and then after a few years of politics, they, they leave. I don't do politics, I don't even uh, read the news or watch the news. I don't care about uh, how they play their games. What I know is that people deserve to live in peace. And what we're trying to do is showing them how to live in peace. We're not getting to a, a solution. So politics gives me uh, allergy. When politicians become more mature, they will definitely uh, help the country uh, move forward. Uh, and unfortunately, maturity lacks uh, everywhere. There was a, a movement called Beirut Madinati. This was like a big uh, revolution, if you want, because uh, they didn't win the elections, but they did uh, give hope to a big, large, big part of the society. They had hundreds of volunteers helping, and they really affected the young people and gave them hope. I'd love to see the Beirut Madinati folks taking part in the political scene and maybe trying to change things. It's mainly people who really want to make a difference, who are taking initiatives, who are investing, and who are doing a lot of great work. Unfortunately, right now we're installing the, the next exhibition, uh, so there isn't much that I can show you, but I can show you the space. I work in the Contemporary Art Gallery. We're showing Lebanese artists for the time being, since we just opened, and there are a lot of Lebanese artists who need a place to show their work. We had paintings, installations, uh, now we have uh, photos, videos. There is a growing interest from the international scene in the art scene here. The art scene is, uh, is very much now about contemporary art, so uh, conceptual art, uh, which tackles many different issues uh, like memory, like the war. It is directly inspired from, uh, from my life in Beirut, which was uh, very hard because of uh, 16 years of civil war. 
we are connected very uh, strongly because uh, you, if someone has uh, shared the same experience as you, you're very deeply connected to him. So <laughs> it, it, it inspires me very much. It's a city that never sleeps. We start early, we finish late. It's alive, it's continuously alive and uh, nightclubs and parties don't stop before 6 a.m. Uh, we do love life, it's clear. Suddenly, a uh, whole district is, uh, is becoming, in one day, uh, a center for parties. Lebanese have never su uh, surrendered always loved life and wanted to move forward. It's just the way we are, you know, Lebanese people are party people. We are happy people no matter what. Uh, it's the sun, I guess. <laughs> the country is based on religion. For me, I would say, unfortunately, because we're uh, making people not open enough to accept each other. The religion can turn to very easily to fanatism, and fanatism is bad. Religion is very good. The dialogue between uh, the, the the religious the religions is very hard. One must be very mature and understand the other and analyze, and that not not everybody do that. <laughs> A quite a conservative country. A lot of people are very attached to their religion. Even like political parties are organized around religion. During the war, you had segregation and you had like a Christian area, a Muslim area, etc. But I think that this is being little by little, uh, it's changing. People, you know, still discriminate uh, against other religions. Surely there are tensions. It's very uh, difficult for different religions to live peacefully in a place as small as Lebanon. We live with the family, friends are very close. And this is something uh, lots of countries in the world envy us about. This is something that's very important here and that's very valued. You stay with your parents, proud of living with your parents, until you get married. And you rarely see unmarried people living in houses alone. And I like that. We're getting familiar with divorce, but it's still something unusual. And uh, we do everything to keep the family. They keep the family and the image of the family, but inside is also corrupted. Not everybody, but uh, there is this uh, phenomenon. Because of corruption, very uh, a big number of Lebanese are very, very rich. They abuse the situations to make the poor poorer and the rich richer. You definitely see contrast. You have very poor areas and then next to them you have very rich areas. There is a small gap definitely like any country in the world. Uh, you don't see it clearly. Uh, you would rarely see people uh, living on the street. There's always places uh, for them but uh, very miserable places. There are people, for example, the children who are begging, but in, in the night, for example, each one is somewhere. There are no more on the street, most of them. I feel safe mostly everywhere, to be honest, really. I can walk alone at night. None of my friends had ever had any bad encounters. I think that people are genuinely nice here. And this is very important for the world to know. It is safe. News is wrong. Never had any problem. Never ever. I'm always positive, always looking forward, always seeing brighter days. Um, and I believe in that. And hopefully within a couple of years, we're going to see the Paris of the Middle East uh, be born again. Especially now with the the extremist Daesh and all this, and see the Syrian war. All this has to end to, to see the Middle East 
good again. Getting better, I think the next generation it should be much, much better than ours in intellectually and uh, healthier. Despite everything, you know, uh, every time we travel and come back, we're like, ah, the city is horrible, it's so badly managed, like it's, it's a mess, it's chaotic, but at the end of the day, it's home. Thank you.